you have a router, you have a switch, but you don't have a layer three capable switch. You have multiple VLANs, a different subnet on each VLAN, obviously, on your network. How do you route traffic between subnets, or really between these VLANs, on your own network without using every single interface on the router? It's called router on a stick. Router on a stick. Some over the years have also referred to it as one-armed router. It's really the same thing. So what is router on a stick and what is the scenario we're talking about here? Let's say you have a primary layer two switch on your network. You've invested a lot of money in purchasing this switch and you've determined, as any good admin or engineer should, that you are using multiple VLANs on that network or that you're going to be using multiple VLANs on that network to keep traffic to a minimum and to allow more control over which nodes or devices on that network can access the other nodes or devices on your same network. You have a router that is used for external connection to other networks or to the internet, but the single switch you have is not capable of handling layer three traffic. It can only handle layer two traffic. So in other words, this layer two switch cannot pass traffic between these VLANs. If a device in VLAN 2 wants to communicate with another device on your network that is located in VLAN 3, in this example, it's all out of luck. It's not happening. Your router that connects out to the internet or to other external networks does have that capability of routing between VLANs because it's a layer 3 device. So technically, if you only have one, two, or three VLANs, you can create a network cable connection from the switch to the router for each of those VLANs. You can create a routable interface on each of those connections on the router, and you can have the router handle that. But let's say you have a limited number of routable physical interfaces on your router and you can't create one for each VLAN on your internal network. You may need each of those available interfaces on that router for other network connections. Or, and really the most often calibrated reason for using router on a stick, you are using more than two or three VLANs on your network. You know, technically, you're capable of having up to 4,096 or more VLANs on a switch configuration for use on your network. If this is the case, having a separate cable connection and router interface and switch interface for each of those VLANs becomes virtually impossible. Enter router on a stick. And as we go through this example, you'll see why in the diagram they call it router on a stick because it kind of looks like an ice cream stick when you get done. With router on a stick, you can pass traffic for multiple VLANs from the switch to the router, have the router route traffic between those VLANs with its super duper layer three capability as a router, and you can send that traffic back to the switch to the proper VLAN for where that traffic needs to go. For this example, I'm using only two VLANs to demonstrate this router on a stick process, but it is only to show how this can be used for multiple VLANs. So we have our layer three router up here and our layer two switch here. We have VLAN two and VLAN three configured on the switch. We only want to use one interface on the switch and one corresponding interface on the router to carry routed traffic from one VLAN to the other when that is necessary. We'll put a desktop computer down here in VLAN 2, and we'll put a server over here in VLAN 3. If the desktop in VLAN 2 wants to connect to and communicate with this server over here in VLAN 3, it's going to need a layer 3 capable device, a router in this case, to convey that traffic across from one VLAN to the other and back again. To solve this, we use router on a stick. Essentially, we create a trunk connection on the interface of this switch that will be connecting to the router. This trunk interface can send and receive traffic for any and all VLANs that are configured on the switch for use on our example network here. On the other end of that cable, we're assuming we're using a single ethernet cable between the switch and the router here. The other end of that cable that connects to the router, we configure that router interface to also be able to receive and send traffic for multiple VLANs. How do we do that? Well, on a router interface, we can't necessarily create a trunk connection. We have to create multiple sub interfaces on the corresponding physical interface of the router. Sub interfaces all function exactly the way a single interface does, but they are set up and configured inside the router's configuration. In our example here, we have two different VLANs on our network. Again, we could have multiple, so we will need two sub interfaces on the corresponding physical interface of the router. Each sub interface will have a default gateway IP address assigned to it. 
again, configured on the router. And that default gateway IP address for each subinterface will be in the subnet for its corresponding VLAN. You'll have a subinterface with a default gateway IP address for VLAN 2, and another subinterface with a default gateway IP address for VLAN 3. Now, we're creating a way for the traffic coming from the desktop in VLAN 2 to go through the router and be conveyed to VLAN 3 to reach the server down here, and vice versa. But we're not done with this configuration because it won't quite work just yet. For the corresponding interfaces on the switch and the router to understand which traffic from which specific VLAN goes where, in other words, which traffic is coming from or going to VLAN 2, and which traffic is coming from or going to VLAN 3, we need to use what's called VLAN tags or VLAN tagging. Now, I will shortly create some videos explaining VLAN tagging. I explain the basics of VLANs and their use and functionality in this video, so I invite you to go over there and watch it when you get done here to understand VLANs better. But most industry standard VLAN tagging uses the IEEE 802.1Q system of VLAN tags and tagging. Typically, it's just called the .1Q system. What does this mean? Well, in our example here, everything is set up correctly, but if we don't use a system of VLAN tagging, the router won't understand which traffic belongs in which VLAN, and really neither will the switch on its corresponding interface connection to the router. So when we create a trunk connection on the switch interface, it is configured to use .1Q VLAN tags, to identify which VLAN each packet belongs to. But on the router, we have to configure .1Q VLAN tags on each of those sub-interfaces to tell the router which VLAN the traffic coming from the switch is coming from, and add tags to the outbound traffic from each sub-interface to designate which VLAN the traffic is coming from from the router to the trunked switch interface. This whole scenario and configuration is called router on a stick because you're basically using a single interface on the router to correspond to a single interface on the switch and all inter VLAN traffic that needs to be routed on the layer three router travels up and down this interface connection. In this case, or example, a single ethernet cable between the router and the switch. This allows you to use the router to route between the VLANs, since we don't have a layer three capable switch to perform that function here, but it minimizes the number of connections you need between the router and the switch for use with multiple VLANs. Now, as you can see, this can quickly get excessive and start bottlenecking the traffic on that single interface connection. So you have to be leery of this type of configuration so that you don't overwhelm that connection with too much traffic. But it gives you a workaround in functionality, especially if you don't have a more expensive layer three capable switch to use. On the other side note here, I've seen multiple cable connections and interfaces used between a switch and a router like this, each one handling several different VLANs. Technically, it's still router on a stick configuration, but it's utilizing multiple cables and interfaces to each handle different sets of VLANs to kind of reduce the traffic passing on any one cable connection between the two. This is a way to reduce the bandwidth required of a single interface or a network cable, as well as the physical interfaces on the switch and router. I've also seen a link aggregation used. This is where where uh, link aggregation is where multiple physical interfaces are configured to function like a bigger pipe or connection. And these link aggregation connections were configured with router on a stick. Technically, it's not really router on a stick unless multiple VLANs are passing on an interface, be it either a virtual interface with multiple physical connections like a link aggregation or a single physical cable connection between two devices, between the switch and the router and the router is using sub interfaces to differentiate those different VLANs of traffic. But you get the point here. The switch cannot be used to route traffic between the different VLANs on your network, so you have to send it over to the router. Have the router convey from one VLAN to the other, and then send it back down the same connection to the switch. 